Hello magical one! In today's video I'm taking you with me on a witchy self-care journey. We'll explore witchy rituals and focus on replenishing our inner cauldron. We'll spend time in a bookstore and read a new fantasy book, craft a magical manifestation garland, brew a magical potion and do a ritual bath. So grab your favorite mug, make yourself some tea and let's spend a day together to fill up our inner cauldron. I think 2024 was the year where I felt the most in alignment with my most magical self. Yet at the same time this year felt like a time of endless hustle and stagnation. I followed my passion but with it came a fire that burned so brightly that it became almost destructive. Fire can be both nourishing and destructive. But balance is something that I am struggling with in all areas of my life to be honest and it became really obvious this year. If I'm passionate about something I can spend nights doing the research or working on projects without taking the proper time to have my goddess moments is what I like to call self-care rituals. And I realized just how much I needed some time to do something that nourishes and fills up my inner cauldron. So today I spent the day doing only what I knew would make me take a step back and fill up my inner cauldron. If you have been on this journey with me for a while, you know that dressing up is such an important part of the day for me, because it really helps me to step into the version of myself that I want to embody that day. Today was a day full of self-care and I wanted to wear something that reflected that. At first I thought that embodying a more feminine energy and wearing a dress would fit this day. But then I felt the urge to just cuddle up in a cute shirt, cord pants and a cozy sweater. Next, I decided to do a small ritual to really set the energy for the day. I haven't been doing tarot or oracle cards lately, but today I knew that it was the time to finally pull a card again. Maybe the cards would give me a hint where I needed to be that day to be able to recharge my inner cauldron. And I could not believe which cards I pulled. So I drew the High Priestess and also at the bottom of the deck the Two of Pentacles 
and I usually check the first card and the bottom card to see what theme shows up and the bottom card kind of reflects the energy that is blocking this energy from the top of the deck if this makes sense and it was amazing and that's why I was kind of surprised or not surprised that I drew these two cards because it is what I am struggling with the most this year finding a balance and really finding the time to listen to this inner voice and not always be in a constant hustle because that way I will get stagnant if I don't listen to that inner voice that gives me the impulses that are in alignment with my most authentic and witchy self. And I also asked Bella if she wants to draw a card and it was hilarious because she drew the emperor and I had to laugh so much because that's exactly her energy. Like she has this bossy energy and yeah, she just knows what she wants. Like she's the queen of the house, but we love her. <laughs> Next I packed my things and through a fairy portal I went to the place that the cards inspired me to go. I arrived at one of my favorite places, an old castle. Today it was foggy but the sun still showed itself from time to time making it clear to me what time of the year we are approaching. And what I love about this place is that if you walk all the way up, you can see as far as the eye can see. Being in a place where there is only the endless blue sky in front of you really helps to clear your mind and calm down your nervous system, but it also encourages me to think limitless. For a witchy self-care day it really doesn't take much. Breathing in the crisp autumn air with the scent of fallen leaves and really let my eyes and soul take in the bright colors of autumn. This is all that it takes to remind me of the magic that comes with the season. And while I was walking around that magical place, I paid attention to anything that grabbed my attention. This is a little exercise I always do when I'm outside now because I truly believe we always receive signs. From our ancestors, spirit guides, our higher self, a deity or a nature spirit, whatever it is for you. And today a question came up for me. What do I need to release in the season? which is exactly the energy the season is embodying. So ask yourself, what is something that you want to release the season? You can journal about that or like me, find your answers in nature. Now in fall, in this place, the wine leaves turn into a cascade of red on the ancient stone walls turning it into a real life fairy tale castle. As a child, I would read a ton of fantasy books. So I took a fairy portal to the town 
and on my way to the bookstore I was. I always admire the worlds that the authors created with so much love to the details and became so immersed in them. When I'm reading it's like I see a movie playing in my mind. And let me know what reading type you are. Do you see while you're reading? Or do you hear or smell or maybe feel? After I chose the book that spoke to me the most, I then ventured on to one of my favorite cafes to get a warm beverage and read. I didn't really have the time to read just for fun recently and usually when I read nowadays it's to do research. But today I ordered a warm cup of cinnamon chai latte, the perfect autumn beverage to accompany my reading. I settled into a cozy corner of the cafe and started reading Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. Alright magical one, I am back home as you can see. I really hope you cannot hear the music that's going on outside. I have no idea what's going on. There is never that kind of music in the area I'm living in. So I have no idea what's going on. It's coming closer. So let's hope they are not coming to my house. But yeah, with that being said, I'm back home and I had the loveliest day in my little town. I was walking around, I enjoyed the architecture and by the way, when I'm surrounded by like German or European architecture for too long, I tend to take them for granted and I forget how beautiful European architecture is, like the ancient architecture with all the individual details And today I was walking around that part of my hometown where there are only these old castle-like looking buildings and I wish I could live there someday. It's so beautiful. I just love it. And yeah, it was lovely just walking around my hometown again, which I haven't done in such a long time. And yeah, as you saw, I went to a bookstore, which is kind of self-care for me, just smelling the smell of the books, like the newly printed books, and just walking around, finding a new good book, which I did, really excited. I will talk about it in an upcoming video, because so far I really enjoy the idea and the book itself. And I went to yeah one of my favorite coffee shops and I did some reading there, which was lovely. I treated myself to some bread, which I haven't done in such a long time. So it was good. We had a lot of fun. And as you saw in the beginning, I also today morning did my herbs ready for winter. I put the dried herbs that I also received from my parents in these really beautiful looking antique jars and also like jars that I bought myself or received and now it just looks amazing. It's like a little apothecary which I'm so excited about and like just putting the herbs inside of these jars was an act of self-care itself because let me tell you that smell was amazing. Like putting in the lavender and the rosemary was so relaxing. I could have fallen asleep and I'm sure if I did not get up and walk to my car and like start driving, 
I would have fallen asleep because the smell was so relaxing. So if you are looking for a unique self-care activity and you love herbs, you are maybe a green witch and you are in a positive way sensitive to smells, try putting herbs in jars. Like highly recommend 10 out of 10. It's so much fun and so relaxing and the smell is just heavenly. So I feel good. I feel really good. But now that we are home, I also want to get creative because to me, self-care also means being creative. Like to me, self-care also means to really embrace that inner magic and to just have fun, to just let out the creativity in whatever way it wants. And if you saw the two tarot cards that I pulled this morning, it was all about balance, which was amazing because that was the theme that I am struggling with the most at the moment, like really trying to find a balance between push and pull, being active and kind of being passive. It's like I'm not the best in like keeping a balance at the moment. And I also pulled the high priestess, which to me is all about following the intuition, like just doing what feels right. And to me, as I said, self-care is also getting creative. That just feels right today. And if you saw one of my last videos where we spent an autumnal day together, we did this autumn memory jar and you guys seemed to really, really love it. So I thought today, why not make a really beautiful autumnal garland? But because I'm a practical witch, and by the way, we have to talk about something bestie, like I have to complain. So let me explain and then let me complain, okay? But... I thought, because I'm a practical witch and I'm a busy witch, I want to make a garland that is interactive. So with interactive, I mean I want to make a garland that really helps us to manifest. So putting it somewhere where we can see it all day long is like half of the rent when it comes to manifestation. So I thought because I have a ton of these little Archon heads right here, I collected them a few weeks ago, I want to make tiny mushrooms, but we are also going to make paper leaves out of old book pages. And on these leaves we will write our manifestations. And let's start crafting and I'll explain how this manifestation magic works so that you can manifest alongside with me this autumn and winter. I started by creating a template for my leaves out of some piece of cardboard. I then made my little leaves from old book pages, but you can also use colored cardboard or anything you like really. Next write down your wishes on the leaves. And the trick here is to write down a lot of in quotes easy manifestations like things that you know can happen in your daily life like getting a coffee for free receiving a bouquet of flowers getting a compliment getting a book or seeing a beautiful sunrise and then write down your big three three wishes that you want to manifest within the season for me, this could be reaching 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Choose something that stretches your mind, but don't choose a manifestation that is completely out of reach for now. I'm also currently working on a manifestation course for witches, so stay tuned for that, because I really want every witch that is watching that being able to manifest their most magical fairy tale life. And now every time a manifestation shows up in your reality, the sleeve is falling from the garland. Take it off and put it somewhere where you can see it. I'll put mine in my autumn memory jar. And I found the magic here is to write down a lot of small manifestations. Because as autumn and winter go on, you will see a lot of the leaves with smaller manifestations fall. And just by looking at all of the leaves that have already fallen this season, you show yourself that you are a powerful witch that is indeed creating her own reality. 
And if you try this, let me know how many of your leaves have fallen this autumn and winter down below. Alright, and now we need to talk, Bestie. Like I told you that I need to complain after I explain. So hear me out. You know the movie Practical Magic, like probably you know it, right? And the soundtrack of this movie is literally used in every single video now on the internet. So I have never seen this movie before and I was so excited about it. Like so many people are talking about it, making references to it. So I paid to watch it. I borrowed the movie online and what can I say? I am so disappointed. Like, I hope I don't make any enemies right here, but I really don't get the vibe about this movie. Yes, there were some scenes in it that are related to witchcraft that I enjoyed, but I had wished there was more of that in this movie. Like, for example, when I even forgot her name, it's like casting her spell into the universe to manifest the dream man of her life. And I really enjoyed that, but other than that, I didn't really enjoy the movie. So let me know down below if you are a fan of Practical Magic, what is the hype about that movie? I really don't get it and I hope we are still besties, but please help me understand because I really don't understand. So that was the complaint of the day and with that let's move on with our self-care activities as a witch. After I crafted the manifestation garland, I wanted to read a little bit more because the day was coming to an end, but there were two more things that I wanted to do today, which I knew would fill up my inner cauldron. I went into the fairy garden and picked a little bit of fresh lavender. And what I love about lavender is that it is still growing even though it is mid-October already. But lavender can be harvested until the first frost or even very early spring. So I made myself a nice cup of tea in one of my favorite mugs, stirred clockwise to infuse my intentions into the tea. And if you use fresh lavender leaves, be careful because this tea makes really sleepy and relaxed. So I highly recommend drinking this in the evening and please make sure that it is safe for you to drink. Okay, let's be honest, there is no witchy self-care day without a ritual bath. And I also do these ritual baths occasionally when doing cleansing magic for example. And I just love decorating the bath with fresh flowers and candles and crystals. I also put dried rose petals that I harvested this summer from my garden into the water to invite the energy of self-love and self-acceptance. This is something that I have been struggling with for my whole life and even though I did a lot of inner work and now that I'm 32 I can look in the mirror and say I love you and really mean it. 
There are still days when I struggle to love myself, but I think that is completely normal. So when doing ritual baths, I create a surrounding that represents the energy I want to invite and imagine the water cleansing and clearing everything away that does not resonate with the energy I intended. I also put in rosemary and lavender and ritual baths really are one of my favorite ways of self-care as a witch. So magical one, thank you so much for watching until the very end. If you have been watching until here, let's be friends and consider subscribing to my channel. But I really hope you enjoyed spending that relaxing and witchy self-care day with me. And I will see you in my next video. So bye bye.